Ola Randiak, Ola Rondiak. I was born in America to immigrant parents from Ukraine. When I was growing up in America, because my parents were immigrants from Ukraine and I went to Ukrainian school every Saturday and I identified very much as being Ukrainian. Um, my name was unusual for an American, especially at that time, and so everybody would ask, what is that? And so I would explain that I'm Ukrainian. So I, really my whole life I was sort of this um, advocate and ambassador for Ukraine and, and its freedom. And so when I moved to Ukraine, it was like I was supposed to be coming home, right? But, um, you know, they looked at me as an American and I stood out as an American. Just a couple years ago, I had this exhibit called Identity Interrupted because I think, and it all came together also at the time with Maidan, where I think there was such a patriotic movement, maybe you could say, that, you know, where people started wearing more of the Ukrainian embroideries and wearing the vinoks on the heads and, and feeling Ukrainian because for a long time, I mean, when I came to Ukraine, you know, I grew up knowing that Ukraine and Russia were different. And really, we wanted Russia to leave Ukraine alone, you know, in diaspora. But then when we came here, a lot of people who were speaking Russian in Kiev, and I was like very confused, because I'm like, why are you speaking Russian, you know, in Ukraine? I guess I came a little naive. So contemporary Ukraine was a little different than how my mother remembered it from childhood many decades prior. So I had to, you know, kind of put all these pieces together and come to terms with it and understand that in America I was Ukrainian and in Ukraine I was American and, and learn that it's, you know, this enmeshment of both, which really in the end makes sense because that's how I grew up, feeling both. What I did was, uh, this is really how the jacket's worn, right? This would be the front, but I took it and cut off the sleeves, and then I turned it around, so it's like a cool, contemporary, trendy jacket. So it's kind of the whole statement of how taking something that's keeping you hostage and finding the freedom in it and getting out of it, whether that's literally or figuratively. I think at the heart of it all, uh, it was my grandmother who I never met. Unfortunately, there's a tragedy involved there with after World War II, my mother was living in Western Ukraine with her family. And um, due to political reasons, my grandfather was a professor and um, he was pretty outspoken about Ukrainian language and trying to hold on to it. So he had been in prison several times and then they got notice that this was going to be it, like they were going to arrest him and not let him out forever or probably kill him because he was on the list. So my grandmother said to him, why don't you go with my mother, who was the youngest of the three children. She was uh, 11 at the time and they were just going to kind of hide out for a few months or so in families, houses in the villages, and then they were gonna return home. They had no idea that the, the front of the war would keep moving 
west, so they had no way of coming back home. And then my grandmother they had sent to Mordovia to a female labor camp in Russia, where she spent about 10 years doing hard labor. And for many years she didn't know if her family was still alive or not, or where they were. Um, but while she was there, she started creating um, beautiful embroideries out of using potato sacks for canvas and fish bones for needles and threads from clothing. And when she was released from there, she had sewn these embroideries into her clothing and took them back to her home in western Ukraine. And there was a priest who was traveling back to the States, and she asked him to take these embroideries in hopes of finding her family. And so he ended up in Chicago, and in 1980, the Chicago Tribune wrote an article about these embroideries from Soviet prisons with hope. And through the Ukrainian diaspora, they found that it was my mother's mother, that they were living in Ohio. And so my mother got some of these embroideries. This is um, an icon that I made in honor of one of her unfinished icons. It's called Mate Mordovia, in honor of my grandmother. It's her with my mother. So smuggled out of Russian labor camp and then out of Ukraine. These secretly made embroidered icons tell a story of hope and faith amid political persecution. And so these are pictures of some of the embroideries that she had made. And then there's just like the letters from my grandmother and um, various symbolic things like a displaced person's, uh, my grandfather's refugee identity card. Uh, I think what ended up being my strongest inspiration in my art, I was nine years old and when I remember uh, my mother getting, there was a telegram but I think my grandfather then told her over the phone that her mother had died and uh, it was a very like a strong painful moment for me that kind of got etched into my brain and I think from there on as a child I used to have a lot of nightmares of sort of female faces coming at me very quickly and it would be like faster and faster and faster and I didn't really make that connection until after I started making a lot of paintings of female faces and then I remembered that and I thought that's very curious you know and so I think there there's definitely a spiritual connection for me with my grandmother and especially after moving to Ukraine Najdorošče Donečko Oksanočko, Jakuju tu bi za prijazni listoček, prijemno meni i doroho, što ti tak srdečno mene zaprošuješ do sebe. Rodine i vsih i tebe vedite, to ne vše tak može zrobiti, jak hočeće. There's this line of, um, I guess, pain in, and tragedy in my family, but also a lot of strength and hope. And so that combination, I think, is sort of what I, what I pull from when I create.